Okay, welcome back to another video. In this video I'd like to code the first test to determine whether or not these units can be created on our terrain. Okay, And that test has to do with the terrain bumpiness. Um, so before I get into coding this, I'm just going to explain how this works. So this is a relatively flat terrain now, so I can build this unit. But as soon as I go to a rocky bit of the terrain, the, uh, the unit turns red. To, um, to tell me I can't build in this area and that is because the terrain is very slopey the unit knows this so it turns red so we cannot build on it but as soon as we get to a flat terrain we can and these um, this updates as well when I rotate to the unit so it also works when I'm changing the rotation so this is what we'll code in the video but before we do I'm going to explain how everything works in uh, in Photoshop so this is just a screenshot of my unit. Um, so the way I've coded this is that we have four points. These points are just empty game objects parented to the graphic of the unit. Okay, so four points, we can make as many as we like. So then we code raycast to point directly downwards uh, and collide with the terrain. So these, po these four points are going to get particular terrain heights at these points Okay, on every frame okay boom so we have this data so we can get the height the tallest point of the terrain and the shortest point of the terrain or the lowest point and minus them um, from each other then we get the, the difference the greatest difference from the tallest point of the terrain and the lowest point from here if we're happy with this difference we can build the units if not we can then turn it red and say we're not going to build that so we'll be doing this and uh, that's that's all it is but it's but we're going to code this in a new script. Okay, so the script we're going to code this in, in our project, I'm going to call this height points. So I'm, again, I'm going to just write down or comment what we, uh, what we need to code. So let's get rid of everything. We firstly need to get to the height points of the unit. So if I hop back to Photoshop, these four points, we're just going to loop through and get these children objects. Okay. We're going to emit a raycast directly downwards from each height point to get the terrain height at these points. Okay, so we're going to get the terrain height at each of these points. Then we're going to say the highest point of terrain minus the lowest point equals the greatest distance. And we use this greatest distance to determine if building is worth it. <laughs> okay, because in the future we might want to flatten the terrain. We'll most probably be doing that. We also need to consider if there's a hill, the unit might intersect with the hill. So this greatest difference will really help us to determine whether or not we can build this this unit on the terrain. So. The first thing uh, I'd like to do is rearrange the materials in our project. So within our resources, I'm going to create a new folder, I'm going to call it materials, and I'm going to drag our transparent material into this folder and also rename it. So we're going to use two transparent textures now, so I'm going to say green and let's duplicate this just by, by pressing command and D, I'm going to call this red transparent. So just changing the color to a little darker red. Okay. So why did I do this? Because we're going to refer to these te these materials in multiple scripts. We we have them in our menu setup script at the moment. We have the green one here, ghost mat. So instead of using this material, I'm going to refer to it in the resources. So let's just say hide in inspector so I don't want this variable to show in my inspector public static material red transparent and I'm also going to create the green transparent material okay so we don't need this one anymore the one we attached to the script so we're just going to find that and re replace it with green transparent and get rid of this ghost material okay so on the starts method we can say red transparent equals resources load then we can simply find it so it's in my materials folder and it's called red transparent 
and it's a type of material. So that's how we do this. Cast it as a material. I'm going to do the same thing for the green one as well. Green transparent as a material. And I'm going to make one more variable here. It's going to be a public static boolean called can build unit. So we're going to test if we can actually build this unit and toggle this boolean. Okay. And uh, the last thing we want to do is attach the height point script onto our ghost object. So where we've attached the unit ghost script, we can also attach the height points script. Okay, so everything's set up now. Um, I'm going to go into the scene and set up the height points in my solar farm object. So within this, within the graphic, I'm going to create an empty game object, bring it into the graphic, and I'm going to call these height points. Okay, so let's zero things out so it's in the center of the unit. Now I'm going to create another empty game object. Let's call this point one. I'm going to go into a wide perspective. I think my selected graphics making things a bit more confusing for us because it's slightly rotated in the Y. So I'm going to change it to 270. Now it's perfectly aligned square. And we might want to bring it down a tad. I think it's a bit too high. So this can be a good guide on where we can put our height points. So going in the Y, point number one is going to be at the top. I'm going to duplicate this three times. Point two, just making the points. It doesn't really matter what the name is since we're just going to loop through these children. Point two is going to go across. Point three is going to go down. Point four is going to go at the bottom right of this unit. We're going to code this through C sharp so we don't have to have this set up in our scene. If there are no height points, we can just assume that the unit can be built. So don't worry about setting this up for all of your units. Okay, this is the uh, unit setup. So I'm going to replace the prefab. Cool, so now we can go and code the test. So at the top of the script, we need some data public float max difference. And I'm going to make the max difference five units. So what does this mean? Well, if the tallest point of the terrain but minus the lowest point is less than five units, then yes, we can build this unit in the on the terrain. If it's greater than five units, then no, we can't. And this is going to be public. We also want some private data. So private float tallest height of the terrain, private float shortest height. Just throw in the data and also private float greatest difference. I'm going to find out the greatest difference of all the points. So before I code the raycasts on each of the height points I want to my raycast to only interact with my terrain so the ground layer mask. We've, we've defined this in our menu setup but the thing is if we make this static like so and save things out it will no longer be configurable within our interface within our editor so instead of uh, making this static for now because creating layer masks through code is out of the scope of this lesson of this tutorial um, I'm going to make a public static uh, menu setup instance we can do this by saying instance and within the start method we can say instance equals this so we're creating a public instance of this script so from here we can just simply get the layer mask even though this is not a static object so within my height points we can just say layer mask ground only equals menu setup instance ground only so nice trick there okay so now we can go ahead and say if if the transform find child so our unit this is attached to remember is the ghost object the graphic and our height points should be inside of this Oops. if so we can do the tests if not if there are no height points we can just simply say menu setup can build unit equals true there is nothing to test therefore we can probably build this unit okay so get the heights we're going to get these heights firstly so game object 
height points object. Just going to get this game object equals transform find child height points cool so we can just simply count how many child objects we have or in other words how many height points we have so we have four of them here so int height points equals height points object transform get child count this is a function we call to just determine how many child objects there are within this game object. So let's create an array so we can store all these height values. I'm going to call these heights. Equals a new float array which has this many indexes in it. Okay, so we're just predefining an array. So now we can loop through these objects. Int i equals zero. I is less than height points i plus plus so let's get the point the height point object firstly so game object point equals um, height points object transform get child we're going to get the get child at this index dot game object cast it as a game object so now we have this point we can then set up the ray cast so Let's set up a raycast hit, call it hit, and then we say if physics raycast, we're going to emit the raycast from the point transform position. It's going to go downwards, so we can say vector free down. We're going to out the hit, so we're going to get the hit, the information in our hit object, and it's going to go infinitely down until it hits something. And lastly, we just want to interact with the ground layer mask. So if we hit something, we can say heights at this index equals hit point y. So what we've done is we've gone through each of our height points, emitted the ray cast downwards, and then collected the, the position at which it hits. And the y value of this hit point is the height of the terrain. Okay, so we're storing all these heights within our heights array. Okay, so now we have the heights, we can then test which height is the tallest and which is shortest. So we're getting the maximum and the minimum heights and then finding the, the difference between them. So to do this firstly I want to say tallest height equals 0 and um, shortest height equals 100 so I know these are going to, these values will be replaced in our for loop. Okay, so like I say, I'm going to define another for loop. Int j this time equals zero. J is less than height points. J plus plus. Just looping through our heights array this time. So then we can say if heights at index j is greater than tallest height, then we can say the tallest height is index j. So heights at index j. So we're looping through every point every height of the terrain if it's if it's higher than the current tallest point and when we start it is zero then of course it will be so we're just going to test that we can also test the shortest point so if height say index j is less than shortest height then the shortest height will be this cool so this is all we need to do to determine the highest and the, the, tall, the shortest point in the terrain now we can work out the difference between tallest and shortest points and uh, we've already defined these values at the top so greatest difference equals the tallest point minus the shortest so now we have this we can determine whether we can or cannot build so if the greatest difference is greater than the max difference so if the difference in the terrain heights is greater than 5 then no we cannot build so to code this we can say menu setup can build unit equals false to start with and we can also tell the user this within the scene so transform renderer material equals menu setup red, red, red transparent cool else 
So if this greatest difference is less than 5, our maximum difference in terrain height, we can say menu setup can build unit equals true. Then transform renderer material equals the menu setup green material, green transparent. Okay, so this is all we need to do. Um, so this should be attached to our ghost object when we first create it in this menu setup. So when we click the GUI button. So that's quite a lot of code. Let's just go to the console, see if we have any errors. I don't think we do, so let's test and see if this works. So the wooden post has no tests to it, so we can build it wherever we like at the moment. The solar panel, on the other hand, does have tests. So if we move it upwards, we cannot build because the terrain height difference is too much. Okay, so this is how things work in, in this test. Okay, so just to recap what we've done, we've basically created some height points. We call them empty game objects in our unit. Each one of them emits a raycast point going downwards. When it, into, when it hits the terrain, we know the height of this terrain. So then we get the highest point of the terrain out of all these points and the lowest point and that then find the difference between them. If that difference is too much, we don't want to build the unit, in this case five units. Um, if, it, if it's below five units, then yes, we do want to build this. So this is the first test to determine whether we want to build this uh, game object in our scene. So we'll be continuing this in the next couple of videos. So thanks for watching the video.